Hi, this is Andy Laptev at Permit IP Andy Andy, and I'd like to talk about what I learned by building a home lab of real gear. Yes, real routers and switches. Um, I know that it may sound crazy in today's virtualized world where you can spin up uh, GNS3 or EVNG uh, up on a server or a laptop and do everything virtually. And um, What's also interesting is anytime I have advocated for the use of a physical uh, home lab, a uh, lab built with you know, physical routers and switches, there has been um, so much um, ensuing arguments on people who are vehemently against um, physical gear in a home lab, um, where they espouse that you can learn nothing additional um, using physical gear that you could just do in an emulated environment like GNS3 or EVNG. So uh, what I would like to share with you are the things I learned specifically because my home lab was built with physical routers and switches. Um, I'll back up for a moment and just tell you why I initially built a lab with real gear. Um, I was working at a NOC and studying for my CCMP and the uh, senior engineers I worked with uh, said, you absolutely need to build uh, a physical lab. You will learn things using physical gear that you would never learn um, in a virtualized environment. So people with more experience than I, who were ahead of me career-wise, um, told me it was important and I trusted them. Um, there was also another guy, uh, a trainer, Jeremy Chara, the CBT Nuggets guy, and I thought he had a great analogy. He said, if you needed surgery, you wouldn't go to a doctor that read a bunch of books and simulated, uh, you know, performed simulated surgeries on his laptop. Uh, you'd want someone with experience. And that's what a lab with physical gear gives you is experience with real routers and switches, how to stand them up, how to work on them, things that come up that would never come up in emulated environments. So, um, between the people that I worked with that I trusted that told me I needed a physical lab and by Jeremy, whose analogy made a lot of sense to me, um, I went ahead and built a physical lab. So without further ado, let me tell you what I learned uh, by using my physical routers and switches in my home lab. So for what you would learn um, at the physical layer, um, I bought a big 20U rack um, because I wanted to fill it with gear and Studying for a CCMP, you don't need 20 pieces of gear in your rack, but I wanted a big rack full of gear. It was just, I, I like blinking lights, I guess, and the sound of whirring fans in gear. It just makes me happy. Um, so, you know, I had to pick a rack. Um, I probably spent almost as much on the rack as I did on all the gear, which in hindsight wasn't a smart financial decision, but I still have my rack. I love it. Um, physical things you would learn that I learned uh, working on my uh, home lab of physical gear, of real gear, um, cabling, right? So when you're using GNS3, you drag two routers, you click the cabling button, you drag a magical cable, ta-da, you're cabled up. In the real world with real gear that network engineers who are paid to do the job when they stand up gear, there is no magical button that you drag across and a, and a cable appears. Um, you have to know if you need a crossover, a rollover, uh, a straight cable. Um, I needed straights for uh, unlike gear when I plugged in a, a router to a switch. Um, I needed crossovers for like gear for my switches, you know, switch to switch connections. Um, I had an Avicent console server that allowed me to jump from device to device. Um, from one location, I didn't have to physically move my console cable every time. I could just log into my Avicent and I, I could just type in a port and, and go um, into uh, you know each device in the rack. And what I one of the things I struggled with for a long time was you need a rollover cable for your Avicent to console ports. I used crossovers and spent hours and days and probably weeks troubleshooting upper layer issues thinking that there was some other kind of issue happening. And when I finally figured out they were rollover cables and put the right cable in, ta-da, the ports came up and they worked. Um, I also had to install cards. Uh, the routers I had initially, they were 2620XMs. Um, they were you know, inexpensive on eBay. And um, 
I needed T1 WIC cards because I needed more port density. I believe they only had one ethernet port on them, maybe two, I, I kind of forget, but by the time you cross-connected everything and just ran out of ports really quick. So, um, you know, I had to install cards, something else you would never do in GNS3. Um, from a logical perspective, one of the first things I had to do when I stood up these devices was password recovery. Um, the people on eBay that I bought these devices off of, I guess forgot to take the passwords off. So I tried to get in, booted it up, and it asked me for an enable password that I did not have. Um, so, you know, you plug in your USB to serial connector into your laptop, um, plug it into the router, I'm doing the break sequence, and it wasn't working. Again, more hours, days, weeks, I found out that I had a bad USB to serial converter. Bought another one. Yay, now I can get into Raman. Um, why do I have to get into Raman? I gotta change the config register so that I can uh, bypass the startup config where those passwords are stored. Things you would never do in GNS3 or EVE. Um, the Avacent terminal server. What is it? Why do I need it? Why did it do Avacent? Because it was cheaper than Cisco. Um, the guys I was working with at the time, I mentioned already, you don't have to move the console cable every single time you want to go to a different router, a different switch. Um, with the Avacent terminal server, I had to learn some basic Linux to configure the thing. So um, when I had to learn Linux in an emulation environment, um, I had to learn it to get the Avacent uh, configured. Um, remote access. I wanted to set up remote access to this lab and you know I had to go in and do some port forwarding so that I could reach my Avacent terminal server remotely. Um, so uh, that made me, you know, if I was running something locally on my laptop, I wouldn't have had to do that. Um, so that was a, a helpful lesson. Um, power, uh, that's another consideration with physical gear. I actually bought a $70, e it's called Easy Outlet. Uh, on Amazon, it's a power outlet with an IP address on it. You can figure it up and you can turn your lab on and off remotely. I did not run my lab 24 seven, um, but I was able to figure out how to fire it up remotely when I needed it and then access it remotely through my Avacent because I had forwarded those ports after I learned Linux to configure the Avacent. Um, code upgrades, the 2620s I had didn't support BGP by default and the 3550 switches did not um, configure the routing I needed. I think it was BGP as well. It had like the SMI image, I think. So I had to set up a, a laptop as an S, you know, FTP server. I had to get the images, get them over to there, figure all that out. And um, so th these are just, you know, to me, when I went on an interview for a network engineering job where I'd have to build networks, when I started to describe to them because at the time I was at a knock doing break fix and I'm trying to display to these people that yes, I can work on your production environment. I know how to work on routers and switches. I've worked on them. I've configured them. I have an enterprise network running in my home lab. Here's a picture. Here's the blog post I've written. I was able to prove to them and show them that I had the experience working with real gear, building a real network with real gear to convince them that I could do the job that I was interviewing for. Um, and I think it went a long way. And my boss later told me, you know, that he was really impressed with how much initiative I took that I, I, I built, you know, a, a lab with real gear. Now, does everybody need a lab with real gear? No, but if you're new and you're starting out and maybe working on your CCNA and you want to try to get that first network job um, by having a physical lab, you will learn all the things that I just laid out for you. And they're things that you would never learn uh, with Automagic, GNS3, EVENG, drag some routers, drag some magical cables, everything works, yay. Thanks for watching and good luck with your lab.